Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome to the post Helena Cell edition of No DQ and A video right here on NoDQ.com and the YouTube channel. Got a lot of questions here regarding Helena Cell from spring.me slash Aaron Rift, and I have some other topics as well, so let's get started. First one today comes from Triple HBK. Hey Aaron, what did you think of Helena Cell? The matches were pretty good, but I felt the crowd wasn't into most of the show. Well, they were definitely into the opener, and I don't blame them for that. The opener was tremendous, I thought. Easily the best match on the show. You had Cody Rhodes and Goldust retaining the titles against the Usos and the Shield. And, um, yeah, just a great pay-per-view quality match. I really enjoyed it. Um, as far as the rest of the show goes, it was very much a mixed bag. I think the show overall was okay, and uh, we'll talk about the main event here in a second. CM Punk and Ryback was really a nothing match. Uh, the Hell in the Cell had virtually no role other than Paul Heyman being on top, and then um, CM Punk beat Ryback and then got his revenge on Paul Heyman. So in that regard, at least uh, we had the conclusion to that storyline, and CM Punk finally got his payback. So, you know, that was okay. And um, John Cena... Won the world title. Big surprise right there. Although, um, you know, a lot of people, at least in the audience, were happy about that. I think uh, people were just happy that Del Rio is no longer the world champion. Um, Kane made his return and um, botched something with Harper. And, uh, you know, they're right where they left off from SummerSlam botching things. Um, so, yeah, I'm not really thrilled about seeing the, the Kane versus Wyatt family feud continue, but whatever. And, um... Now let's talk about the main event. Uh, this question comes from Rex0619. Hey, I love the shows. My question is, why did Shawn Michaels betray, betray Daniel Bryan? And why did Randy Orton win the WWE Championship? And why is Spring.me censoring Randy Orton's name? The, the Randy is five stars. I don't even know. Anyways, um, yeah, that was a really weird finish. And um, I'm not a big fan of it. Um, first of all, I don't think they should have done a screwy finish again. Uh, you know, Daniel Bryan gets screwed once again. And, um, you know, I think, uh, you know, they, WWE betrayed the fans here, if anything, because the fans got to pick the special referee and uh, people buying the pay-per-view are thinking that they're finally going to get a clean finish. Babyface Shawn Michaels, Hell in the Cell, no outside interference. But no, of course there has to be Tons of interference. Triple H comes out. Um, you know, he was accusing Shawn Michaels of a slow count. And then um, Shawn Michaels got knocked down at one point. Triple H gets in the ring. And uh, Daniel Bryan hits his flying knee on Triple H. And then uh, Shawn Michaels goes to check on Triple H. And then decides to super kick Daniel Bryan. And um, Randy Orton makes the cover. And Shawn Michaels uh, reluctantly makes the count, and uh, Randy Orton is a WWE champion. So, um, you know, very confusing. Um, the first thing I thought was, is Shawn Michaels turning heel? And, you know, a lot of people are asking me about that. I guess we'll just have to wait and see how it plays out on Raw. I, um, you know, I don't think it was a heel turn. I don't even know. Um, and I don't think the crowd knew because when Shawn Michaels hit the sweet chin music, I mean, there was a little bit of a shocked reaction, and then the crowd just went silent. And then uh, when Randy Orton won, there was uh, virtually no reaction. So, you know, I think the people were confused, and I don't think the people were happy with that finish because they wanted to see um, Daniel Bryan finally um, get get his justified win and, and become WWE champion, and uh, that did not happen. So, um, you know, I think a lot of people were let down with that ending, and, you know, I, I think the ending of a show is important because that's what people tend to remember the most and, uh, you know, I think people are going to look na look down on this pay-per-view because of that. So, you know, uh, definitely a big downer, and um, I guess we'll see what happens. I mean, I'm not all that interested to know how this plays out, but, um, you know, we'll, we'll just see. Uh, I, I don't think it's a heel turn from Shawn Michaels. I don't think that's what it was intended to be. I think it was just a way um, to keep the storyline going or, or um, you know, they, they got something going on with Triple H and um, Daniel Bryan and, you know, um, I'm not, I'm not sure what they're thinking here, but whatever. All right. This one comes from Jose, um, Jose E-A-C-A-V-E-D-O. 
Hey Aaron, do you think WWE should have gone with yet another screw job finish? That's four in a row, and if WWE keeps doing this, the buy rates for the pay-per-views are going to go down even more. Did Sean turn heel? What's going to happen next? Um, you know, I already talked about the Sean heel thing. Um, yeah, I mean, it's definitely not good to uh, keep this pattern going. If you're going to do a screw job finish, you know, I was expecting it for Night of Champions, and even Battleground, I was expecting it, and... Um, then I, I, I figured that Hell in the Cell would be the blow-off and Daniel Bryan would finally get his big win and, uh, you know, he would move forward as WWE Champion. Um, to have yet another screw job finish, I mean, yeah, it is going to um, definitely hurt your pay-per-view business. I don't know if the buy rates are going to go down anymore. You know, I, I think they've already bottomed out at this point. The people that buy the pay-per-views buy the pay-per-views and they're going to do it no matter what, pretty much. Um, but I, I think it's going to be difficult in the future to get people, new people, to start buying the pay-per-views and people that stopped buying the pay-per-views to start buying them again with the way WWE is doing things. So, I mean, I, I do think it's going to um, hurt goodwill with fans in the future. And, uh, you know, when you have a pay-per-view, you know, fans want to see uh, decisive winners. And, uh, you know, you do the screw job finishes. It's perfectly fine doing it on free television. Um, and even once in a while on a pay-per-view, it's okay. But, yeah, I mean, this, this is getting ridiculous now. Um, so, you know, I, 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 I think WWE is um, just deciding they're going to do what they're going to do. And, you know, they're not all that concerned with the pay-per-view buy rates at this point. And I guess their attitude is, um, you know, it's bottomed out already. And then they're just going to do whatever to advance their own storylines and uh, keep doing what, what they want to do. So, I don't know. Alright, this one comes from Mr. Tuxedo. With Randy Orton, and Randy is censored again for some reason, winning the WWE Championship last night at Hell in a Cell, who do you think his next opponent will be at Survivor Series? Well, the obvious answer would be CM Punk. Now that CM Punk is done um, with the Ryback feud and then uh, feuding with Paul Heyman, I'm assuming that they'll, they'll do Randy Orton versus CM Punk at Survivor Series, um, but maybe they'll do a triple threat. I mean, we'll have to wait and see what happens on Raw. And uh, I think after Raw, we'll have a, a clear-cut direction as to where they're going. And um, this question comes from Stars Gaming um, 1009 Hey, Aaron, love the show. Now that Randy Orton has won the title, do you see Daniel Bryan continuing his feud with Triple H into the Royal Rumble and Bryan to win the Rumble and beat Orton at WrestleMania? Haha, <laughs> that's a good one. Daniel Bryan winning the Rumble and... Uh, winning the title WrestleMania. Yeah, you would like that. Um, yeah, I don't, like I said, I don't know what's going to happen here until um, we, we find out at Raw what the direction is for Survivor Series, but one would assume that um, Triple H and Daniel Bryan are going to have a match at some point. And as I mentioned last week, um, you know, that whole promo with Triple H uh, burying Daniel Bryan or whatever, as long as that's leading to uh, Daniel Bryan getting a clean win over Triple H. You know, I'm perfectly fine with that. And uh, maybe that's what's going to happen. Maybe WWE does have some kind of master plan here. And Daniel Bryan is eventually going to um, get his big moment. But, you know, like I said, they, they keep dragging it out one pay-per-view after another. Um, you know, people are going to get tired of it. Um, but, yeah, I, I think if you're going to do Triple H... Oh, I for totally forgot about Big Show. I mean, Big Show wasn't even on the pay-per-view. Um, so who knows where he he plays into the storyline at this point. So, I mean, there are, there are a lot of questions um, that need to be answered. And, you know, we'll find out on Raw and in the coming days what's going to happen. Um, so, I, I mean, you have to do Triple H and Daniel Bryan, I think, at, at some point. And, um, you know, you have Big Show in the mix. Maybe maybe it'll be Randy Orton versus Big Show at Survivor Series. But what do you do with CM Punk? I mean, I'm, I'm thinking CM Punk's going to get back into the into the title mix. And then, of course, you have John Cena as a world champion. So, yeah, just a lot of um, different ways WWE can go right now. And maybe they do have something that will make sense in the end. I, I'm really hoping so. But, you know, it's WWE and uh, you never know what's going to happen with them and if it's going to be a positive. All right, this one comes from Kevin Bowen. I feel like Damian Sandow being the world heavyweight... Um, championship money in the bank holder will be like Dolph Ziggler's money in the bank run where he holds the case for a long time then cashes in and loses the title a month or two later could you see something like this happening um yeah unfortunately for Damian Sandow he's in a bad position right now I mean even though he has the money in the bank 
briefcase. I mean, we, we saw what happened with, with past money in bank holders like Jack Swagger and Dolph Ziggler. And, um, you know, it, it's safe to say he's not getting a clean victory over John Cena. That's not going to happen. Um, so if anything happens, he'll do the edge cash in where he comes out when John Cena's already had this grueling match and uh, win the title. And then, uh, you know, a month later, John Cena wins it back and Damian Sandow goes back to the mid card. Um, so in all, in all likelihood, that's what's probably going to happen. And, uh, you know, I, I don't get the booking. I, I don't understand it. I mean, Damian Sandow won the Money in the Bank briefcase. Why not build him up and um, make him a credible force? And, and they don't do that. They just, you know, have him on the sidelines and, and uh, have him as a bit player. And then all of a sudden, uh, he cashes in and wins the world title. And everybody knows it's a fluke. So, you know, it, it just devalues the title. So, you know, not a big fan of, of, of how they do things in that regard. But, you know, once again, it's WWE. They're going to do what they're going to do. And as long as they're profitable, then uh, that's all that matters to them. All right, that'll do it for this edition of No dq &A Video. Thanks, as always, for watching. Let me know what you think about the Hell in a Cell pay-per-view, and um, stay tuned to NoDQ.com. A lot going on right now. Um, you know, there's talk about TNA being sold, and I'll, I'll talk more about that uh, later this week on No dq &A Video. Uh, submit your questions, spring.me slash Aaron Rift, and um, I will see you guys tomorrow for a post-raw edition of No dq &A Video.